Funding provided by Fairway Meat and Grocery is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls State Basketball Championships. Fairway believes in supporting the places Iowans learn, work, live, and play. Congratulations to all the schools and student-athletes in this year's games. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialists, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. I am a farmer. I am a great cook. I am a small town girl. I'm a city boy. I'm a banker. I'm an Iowa banker. No matter who you are, there is an Iowa banker who is ready to help you get where you want to go. Iowa bankers, allowing you to discover the genuine difference of Iowa banks. to downtown Des Moines and Wells Fargo Arena situated along the Des Moines River, our host for the conclusion of this exciting weekend of Iowa Girls High School Hoops. Thank you so very much for joining us on our second and final night of tournament coverage broadcast to all 99 counties on statewide Iowa PBS. We've already crowned four champions already and our 1A matchup will round out another great year of girls basketball. Hello everybody, I'm Paul Yeager and throughout the night, Iowa PBS Sports will continue to bring you highlights, analysis and features from right here on our on-site sports desk. And stay tuned for all the pageantry of these state basketball championships. This is game 35 of the 2020 championships. So who better to take us out but B.J. Shaben and Laura Leonard in the Class 1A state championship. Thank you, Paul. It is time for state championship basketball. It's the Class 1A title game as the third seeded Golden Bears of Bishop Garrigan take on the top seed and perennial power, Newell Fonda Mustangs. Hi again, everyone, with Laura Leonard on BJ Shaven and Laura. Wow, the youth are really going to be on display here. Oh, it really is. I, Bishop Garrigan has two freshmen that are really come to the top for this team. They lead them in scoring and they lead them in assists and steals, but they're going to have to go up against the pressure of Newell Fonda. It is relentless. It is there from the opening tip, and these freshmen are going to have to be able to play through it. Let's take a look at these two teams. First up, Bishop Garrigan, the Golden Bears. Well, they've had quite a run here. Their fifth trip to state, two of the last four three years, making their first ever state championship appearance. They have a school record for W's. And you mentioned those two freshmen, Crooks and Joyce, look out. They're going to be a treat to watch. For Newell Fonda, hey, this team, you know a lot about them. They're the defending state champions, 15th trip to state, 53-game winning streak. Plus, they lead all classes in the state in scoring, point differential, assists, and steals. Let's go to tonight's public address announcer. The Mustangs. Fans, each year at the Girls State Basketball Tournament, the Iowa Bankers Association presents the Student Athlete Achievement Award to a student athlete who excels on the court, in the classroom, and in her community. The recipient receives a $1,000 scholarship to the college of her choice. The 2020 Student Athlete Achievement Award winner is Miranda Peters from Marquette Catholic High School. <laughs> Presenting the 2020 award is Tim Doherty from Bellevue State Bank. Congratulations to Miranda Peters and thank you to Tim Doherty with Bellevue State Bank and the Iowa Bankers Association for their sponsorship of this award and continued support of the IGH SAU. What a matchup, Newell Fonda playing in their ninth state title game against the upstart Golden Bears of Bishop Garrigan. Garrigan fans, let's hear it for your Golden Bears.
You will find the fans. Let's hear it for your Mustangs. Fans, it's now time to introduce the players in today's 1A championship matchup. First of all, here are your non-starters and assistant coaches for the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears. Number one, Emma Granjanette. Number two, Anna Berkey. Number 12, Kelly Beatty. Number 20, Emma Fogarty. Number 22, Gracie Elsbecker. Number 23, Meredith Tegas. Number 24, Reese Rosenmeyer. Number 30, Ashlyn Hovey. Number 32, Ella Muller. And number 34, Amanda Miller. Your assistant coaches, Mick Elbert and Joe Bartolo. Now, here are your non-starters and assistant coaches for the Newell Fonda Mustangs. Number 10, Mary Walker. Number 14, Mia Walker. Number 22, Emma Erickson. Number 24, Nevea Lyman. Number 32, Lainey Hogrink. Number 42, Sophie Stewart. Number 44, Ellie Legault. Number 50, Izzy Sievers. Number 52, Paige Roberts. And number 54, Haley Perman. Your assistant coaches, Courtney Darrow and Kevin Larson. Starting lineup for this 1A championship for Bishop Garrigan as senior number four, Katie Noonan. For New Fonda, junior number 12, Bailey Sievers. For the Golden Bears, a senior number 10, Madison Meister. For the Mustangs, a sophomore, number 20, Macy Sievers. For Bishop Garrigan, a freshman, number 11, Molly Joyce. For Newell Found a junior, number 30, Maggie Walker. For the Golden Bears, a junior, number 14, Kaylin Myers. For the Mustangs, the senior, number 34, Megan Morenz. And for Bishop Garrigan, a freshman, number 55, Audie Crooks. For New Fondes, junior, number 40, Ella Larson. Head coaches for Bishop Garrigan, Brandon Schwab, and for New Fonda, J Dick Jungers. Now, ladies and gentlemen, turn your attention to the scorer's bench as I introduce our officials for this 1A championship. Mark Royer, Sean Peterson, Raleigh Weavers, and your bench official, Brianne Byerly. All right, fans, who's ready for championship basketball? Let's look at the state map. Where are these two teams from? Well, you have to go north. Newell Fonda, 145 miles away. Bishop Garrigan, located in Algona, about 138 miles from Des Moines. The two, well, they haven't played against one another for about three years. The last time was a 2017 regional semifinal. Newell Fonda won that game by 22. Megan Lorenz played in that game and had 10 points. Bishop Garrigan, what are their keys to the game? Well, number one, they can't back down against this pressure of Newell Fonda. They have to 
continue to attack. That's got to be their mindset. And they have to have mental toughness. That press is going to wear on them. They have to be able to overcome that. And for Newell Fonda, they want to ramp up the pressure. They want to be after you the entire 94 feet. And then they have to make that extra pass on offense to make sure they're getting players open. The big stage is set. This one is underway. And Garrigan will control the opening tip, but a steal by Sievers, and she'll be fouled by Molly Joyce, the freshman. The starting five here for Newell Fonda wearing their white uniforms with blue numbers trimmed in gray. It's Sievers, Bailey, and Macy in the backcourt, joined by Maggie Walker, Morenz, and then Ella Larson. And the first free throw is good by Macy Sievers. For Bishop Garrigan, it's Katie Noonan, Madison Meister, Molly Joyce, Kaylin Myers, and Audie Crooks. You know, that last play was a great example of the hustle that you are going to see from Newell Fonda. You cannot be casual going after a loose ball. You have to go after it 100%. Otherwise, Newell Fonda's going to sneak in from behind you and take it away from you. And that's exactly what happened to Joyce right there. Skip pass up top. That's a two. And the rebound will come down to Larson. They'll run and gun out ahead to Walker. And she'll lose it out of bounds. So the Golden Bears will have the ball back. Great atmosphere here for this 1A state championship game. Both communities have emptied out. And a steal up top. That's by Morenz to the rack. You can see how this pressure forces you. They're making you go one way or the other. And they make you go down the sidelines, right into a trap right there, and then they're able to get into the passing lanes. That's going to be tied up. Possession arrow will give it to Garrigan. So the front part of this pressure leads the, the ball handler one way or the other and wait till they get over the half court line and then the trap comes and then that's when it becomes very difficult because then they start covering up all angles all passing lanes so you have to come and help out your teammate and make sure you're stepping to the ball all the time a triple team crooks nearly got through it to get the bucket and she's going to be called for the foul audie crooks listed at 6-3 will be a presence but the defense is there for newell fonda they turn you in to the double team, and Sievers was, or excuse me, Morenz was able to get up and get the steal and take it all the way. Mustangs facing the Garrigan pressure. Morenz in the paint underneath. And here's Morenz from 14. Can't get it to fall. And the rebound tracked down by Sievers. She'll go to Larson. Great ball movement here by Newell Fonda. And that's Lorenz what... and an up and down call. The presence of Audie Crooks. Now the Mustangs have not faced a player above six foot all season long. And Audie's at 6'3". Right there, and there it is. Right there, they haven't seen it. And Morenz goes up and sees the extension of the arms and thinks, well, I can't shoot over that and had no place to go with it. The jumper by Myers. Not there. Crooks with the rebound. Put back is there. Audie Crooks gets Bishop Garrigan on the board. What a great adjustment by Crooks. She was able to tip that ball to herself and reach over the top without fouling. And Morenz quickly with a great pass from Sievers. Able to get the bucket. 6-2, Newell Fonda. What a track meet. Well, that's what it's going to be the entire game. So you have to mentally prepare for that because it is going to be that pace the entire game. But if Bishop Garrigan can get that ball into the post, Newell Fonda can't match up. Audie with the bucket. Now the three. And a rebound to Crooks. And a foul going to be called on Newell Fonda. Bailey Sievers, the 5'8 junior, will pick up the foul. That's the first on Newell Fonda. So I think we've seen a little bit of an equalizer to this pressure. You've got the height in the middle that's really controlling the boards right now in Audie Crooks. 
as well as when she gets into the post and they find her. They don't have anybody tall enough. Once she gets that ball up above her head, she's able to go to the glass. So that may equalize this pressure a little bit. Three subs into the game. Mary Walker, a freshman for Noah Fonda, joined by Laney Hograve, and then Ellie Lago into the game. Joyce will bring it ahead to Crooks. Block. No, wipe it off. She's going to be called for a travel. Well, you got a glimpse of what these freshmen can do for this team on that possession. A behind-the-back dribble by Joyce as she brought the ball up the floor. Nice little floater inside to Crooks, but she shuffled the feet. And the loose ball, turnover. Crooks will pick it up. Now will outlet it ahead. Here's Noonan. Finds Myers. And we're tied at six. Well, what was one of the keys? Don't back down. They are not backing down right now. They are in attack mode. Brooks, no question, has been an X factor for Garrigan here in the opening quarter. And this jumper from 14 is good by Ella Larson. What a great cut by Ella Larson. Found the gap in the defense, flashed right to it. And that's the one thing that Coach Junger says about this team. They're great passers. <laughs> So is Bishop Garrigan. So are they. Freshman to freshman, Laura. <laughs> Joyce to Crooks. She's got six of Garrigan's eight. And they give up the 14-footer to Maggie Walker. She was just able to dribble through the defense, and there was no defensive rotation. She was able to find an opening. Underneath, Garrigan going to be called for the travel. Madison Meister. Commits the third turnover for the Golden Bears. And right quickly to the bench, Jick Jungers will go again. Megan Morenz will check back in along with Bailey Sievers. Garrigan will go to their bench for the first time. Emma Fogarty, the senior, will come in. She'll spell Katie Noonan. We've got Fogarty in there for defensive purposes. She's a good defender. And against this quick lineup of Newell Fonda, you need to have somebody that can get after them and shut them down. Sievers caught up. Morenz on the block. Now the three. Good! Let go! Bearing the triple. Inside out. And there again, it's the passing on display. The nice thing that Lego did was she passed it in and then she readjusted. And count it! Crooks will go to the line to try to convert the three-point play. You can see Crooks posting up the three defenders all around her, but when she gets those hands up, she's got great hands. She is able to collect anything in her area, pulls it in, keeps that ball high above her head, goes to the glass. Crooks' free throw is buried, a 64% free throw shooter on the year making it a two-point game. Newell Fonda has led from the opening tip. Now another three. And this is over the backboard out of bounds. And the Mustangs will go quickly to their bench. Dick Jungers is going to try to keep this pace of the game up. Maggie Walker will come in, along with Ella Larson back into the game. They're going to rotate players in and out because they want to keep this pressure up and they want to keep Fresh legs in there, fresh minds, fresh sets of eyes in there, making sure they're doing everything right. To the baseline, that's Meister to Crooks, and count it! Whoa, Audie Crooks! <laughs> that pass was bobbled, and she was able to regain control of it and go up strong with the contact and knock it down. What strength by Crooks. She's got 11. And it's a tie game at 13 apiece. Newell Fonda will play it around the perimeter. Now a three. Walker's shot off the mark. Crooks with the rebound. Playing a game almost by herself. And being very smart about it as she got that rebound. And a charge is going to be called on Joyce, and that's big. That's going to be her second. And that's 
that is a collision as Joyce is going hard into the hoop. <laughs> and what a great job. That's, that's what you call taking one for the team. But what I've seen about Crooks is when she pulls the rebound, she's not in a hurry to get rid of it. And knowing that Newell Fonda's hanging around, she's making very sure of the outlet pass. Larson gets the bucket 15-13. They're going to keep Joyce in the contest with those two fouls. What an opening quarter here. For just joining us late, Newell Fonda has led from the opening tip, but it's been the Audie Crooks show. She's got 11 of the 13 scored by Garrigan. Newell Fonda trying to run this one ahead. The three at the top, it's good. A three by Ella Larson. Again, they turn a steal into points. And almost another one. They're just really making Garrigan, and they call a timeout. They were getting very close to having that 10, 10 second call, but they're making Garrigan not they're not sure of their passes right now. They're afraid that they're going to get that lane jumped and the pass stolen. But you can see the great passing of Newell Fonda on back-to-back -back possessions, the way they get inside the defense, the way they find one another when they're open. Let's hear from Bishop Garrigan's head coach, Brandon Schwab. Remember, when Maddie's out, I got to have you kind of in the middle there making that thing. But make it cross there. You guys are doing a great job of up here in the press. We're doing a fine job. Remember, inside the volleyball courts here, this is not the area we want to go because they're going to jump us. So if you dribble in this area, you plan on crossing and getting to the center of the floor, okay? Offensively, keep moving the ball. Move the ball, keep looking inside. Don't drop down in there, though, and they throw the ball in. That's on you. got to stay out there in the shade. Hey, 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 defensively, get out on the three. Let's go. We are? Answer this run. Answer the run. Five-point lead here for Newell Fonda, matching their largest lead of the game. And we've only got a minute 38 left to go in the opening quarter. And Garrigan's one of their top players, the freshman Molly Joyce, with two fouls. She'll have the ball right now for Bishop Garrigan. Myers. Joyce going to eye things up. Meister nearly lost it, regains it. And now it's turned over. The pressure of Newell Fonda. Here's Larson. Tried to pass it to the inside, and Garrigan will get it right back. Myers ahead in the front court. They find Crooks on the block. <laughs> Automatic. 13 for Crooks. When they get it into the front court, the first place they're looking is to Crooks, and they're able to get it to her. Inside of 50 seconds to play in the first eight minutes. Here's Sievers. And a rebound to Meister. Earlier in that possession, Joyce tried to reach in and pick a pocket, try to get the steal, and then she quickly pulled her hand back, knowing that she's got those two fouls. Meister going to draw contact and will go to the line. Madison Meister, one of the few seniors on this Garrigan roster, averaging just over nine a game. And a 43% free throw shooter. Also a big part of their softball team that qualified for the state tournament as Newell Fonda goes back to their bench again. Fograve will check in along with Mary Walker again. And Audie Crooks is going to get some rest here. Coming in for is going to be Grace Ellsbecker, the 5'7 junior. And after the missed shot, the rebound tracked down by Amanda Miller. Another senior for Garrigan who just checked back into the game and she's fouled. Crooks didn't get very much of a rest because now they were going to take her out, give her the extra rest during the quarter break. But now they've got the possession back. They want her in there because they want know that they can go to her. She's got that height advantage. And that's why she's back in the ballgame. It's a two-point game. Nevaeh Lyman will also check in, draws the double team. Joyce. Finds Crooks, but has it taken away. Here come the Mustangs. Walker shoots the three. And it's wide of the mark. 
And Bishop Garrigan will get it back with 16 seconds to go in the quarter. And Coach Schwab is also going to go to his bench. Kaylin Myers. Myers will check back in. She'll be in for Amanda Miller. It's a chess game between these two. Joyce in backcourt. She'll run it ahead. Boy, three on one. Joyce pulls up, 14-footer. Crooks with the putback. That's why he put her back in the ball game. The half court heave is in and out by Maggie Walker. What an entertaining first quarter. Folks, we've got a dandy brewing. Let's go to Paul Yeager. Call your friends, folks. We have our fourth tie of the game. This one's a good one. But there were some pretty good 1A semifinals as well. You got to win in that to get to tonight in the championship game. Let's begin in the semifinal of St. Ansgar against Newell Fonda. Ella Larson saves it. Maggie Walker hits the jumper. Now Maggie Walker again stops and pulls up for three. Newell Fonda was rolling at the half. Ball moving around. Walker to Larson to Severs. And now Bailey Severs to Ellie Legault. From deep, and Newell Fonda rolls in the semis, 84-33. How did Bishop Garrigan get here? Well, they played Bellevue Marquette Catholic. That ball game yesterday afternoon. Molly Joyce, then the press, turns into points. As Joyce makes it look easy, bears up by 10 at the half. Audie Crooks, I think we've said her name a time or two. I, I'm not sure, maybe I don't have a good connection, but get used to saying her name because if Audie Crooks can dominate like she did in the semifinals, as she is here in the finals, 69-37 Bishop Garrigan rolls. Let's go back down to BJ and Laura. Thank you, Paul. Here's your class 1A tournament bracket. Newell Fonda, a winner over St. Albert, St. Ansker. Bishop Garrigan got here by besting Martinsdale St. Mary's and then knocking off the two seed Marquette Catholic. Newell Fonda, winners of 53 straight games. The last time they lost was the 2018 1A title game. They put up a lot of points. Right now they're in a battle, tied up at 18, their closest game all year was a 10-point win against Western Christian at the beginning of the season. They outscore their opponents by almost 43 points a game. And they have done that here in the state tournament, the two quarterfinal and the semifinals. They have been able to put up a lot of points, but they might have met their match here today in this championship game. Audie Crooks with 17. 21-20 our score. Sievers will drive it. Where they're working that baseline. They continue to work the right side and the baseline, but every time they drive it, Crooks is right there to stop them in their tracks. Joyce has it taken away. It'll be tied up. Bishop Garrigan will control the ball. As they have the possession arrow in their favor. So Maggie Walker will now come back into the game. She'll spell Lyman. Joyce trying to dribble through that pressure defense. And if you do that, you know that Newell Fonda is going to be reaching. They've got those active hands. You really have to protect your dribble when you're going by a defender. Joyce drives, dishes to Crooks. Freshman to freshman again, and it's just a little floater pass, knowing that Crooks has those great hands. Put it up in the vicinity, she's gonna go get it. First lead of the game, and Myers looks to add to it for Garrigan. To the rack! And a foul will be called. Joyce has such great ball handling skills, sees the defenders all come at her. She draws all the attention. That leaves Crooks open, and she can give that little floater over the top of that defense. Kaylin Myers, what a year it has been. School year for her, missed the entire volleyball season due to a knee injury.
but was cleared to play basketball in November. It's the first one, gives her team a two-point advantage here. She was a third-team All-Stater a year ago, averaged 20 points a game. This year, right around eight to nine a game, but part of that is what, being the team player. And, and she realized that you've got a couple of freshmen coming in that are very good and can help this team, and she gave up some of her minutes and her scoring to allow those freshmen to step into some prominent roles. Brooks with the rebound again. She has six boards. They'll dump it into her on the double team. Can't get it, gets her own rebound and draws contact. Audie's gonna go to the line. She went from one side to the other, got her own rebound <laughs> and draws the contact. Well, there have been Division I coaches that have been to practice to watch her play. There's been no offers made yet for Audie. But with a performance like this so far, that phone might be ringing. <laughs> it might be ringing tomorrow morning. Or vibrating if she's getting text messages. Okay, is that yeah. how they do that now? I think that is. <laughs> or it might be Instagram or Twitter. I don't know. There's so much that I can't keep up with it. Audie misses both free throws. She is just a 64% free throw shooter as we talked about. And now a little bit of pressure here by Garrigan on Newell Fonda. Here's Sievers with the dump down. And Lorenz is going to be fouled from the backside by Myers. The junior will pick up her first. So Megan Lorenz will go to the line. Averaging just over eight. And one of the lone seniors on this roster that plays a lot. Well, you look up and down the roster for Newell Fonda, and you see the senior, Morenz, and then you see a lot of players that have the number nine behind their name. There's a lot of freshmen on this team, a lot of sophomores on this team. So this is a team, and we've seen it year in and year out with Newell Fonda, that they are a team that just continues to reload. And we talked about it in the pregame show about how this system is in place and the younger kids coming up through the system, when they get to the high school level, they know exactly what's expected of them. And the tough rebound there by Fogarty. Myers will find Joyce. Well, the freshman will give it up to Myers, the junior. For three. Can't get it to fall. And a foul is going to be called here on Fogarty. And that's going to be the fifth team foul on Garrigan. We knew both of these teams would show pressure. And both of them are very disruptive in their pressure and what they do and make a team speed up. This is going to be tied up. Newell Fonda, how about the tenacity there by Bailey Sievers? And the Mustangs will go to their bench. Mary Walker will come back in. Even though Newell Fonda and Dick Jungers is continuing to use his bench. It's like a, a hockey line right now coming in and out. Mia Walker into the game for the first time. But it seems like, Laura, both teams are not showing signs of fatigue necessarily, but they're getting a little gassed. Yeah, and I think part of the, obviously, the pressure and the up and down the court, but also just the enormity of the game and knowing what you're playing for, that all wears on you as well. Well, we call it the big stage here at Wells Fargo Arena, home to the Girls State Basketball Tournament for the next 10 years. And what a scene here tonight, and what a game so far. Bishop Garrigan and number one, Newell Fonda. Another turnover here as Joyce tried to feed the post. Audie Crooks, are they doing something differently, the Mustangs, because it seems like Garrigan's been out of sorts trying to enter the ball to the block. I don't know if they're doing anything differently. I think 
that pass that Joyce just threw. She just got a little over anxious and just put too much air underneath it. The outlet ahead to Myers. Tries to fend through traffic. Can't get the shot to fall. And the Mustangs get the loose ball. Here's Walker. And that ball nearly stolen away. Katie Noonan's not giving up, man. She is just <laughs> continuing to hound the new Fonda ball handlers. Two point game, 350 to play. And now a timeout going to be taken here by Dick Jungers and Newell Fonda. So Audie Crooks, though, leading the way for Bishop Garrigan. She's got 19 in the game, and her presence has been all over this one. Well, it really has defensively causing problems. She's a difference maker on the defensive side of things. Look at her work through traffic. Two players there with hands straight up able to work her way through it, and then tip the ball to herself, gets the rebound, makes the move to the basket, and then finding the gap in the defense. And just, she's really good with the footwork, knowing where to be on the floor. And her teammates know how to get her the basketball. She is so close to a double-double here in the first half. That's pretty impressive. Her mom can talk to her all about playing at the state tournament. In fact, her mom was a part of Bishop Garrigan's 2000 state tournament team. And the tradition carries on here now with Audie. They're in this title game. Joyce is going to work it up against Walker. And a travel is going to be called as a good double team. Slapped on by Newell Fonda. Joyce trying to split the double team with the dribble. She's got her feet tangled up, traveled before she was able to make the pass or the shot. Newell Fonda looking for a bucket. 0 for the last six from the field. The skip pass to Walker. They find Morenz. And now the three. Morenz with the rebound and one. That's a big bucket right there. That's when they needed a bucket. I think they were a little staggered with the way that Bishop Garrigan has been playing them. I think they were a little shell-shocked, and now they need to get back into their rhythm of what they do. So that was the bucket that they needed to maybe provide a little spark. Well, Renz now with seven, tied up at 24. Here's Joyce for three. Be the three! Finally got one to fall. She's been frustrated all first half. They've been on her, not allowing her any good looks. And she pulls up from deep and knocks it down. And the rebound tracked down by Noonan. You know, Crooks had a part in that as well. She just got a fingertip on it, knocked it away, and allowed a teammate to go get it. Here's Crooks. A lot able to get that down was Audie Crooks fighting through traffic. She's got 21. She, I'm just still amazed at her hands and how good they are. Soft, as they say. Here's Joyce. Has the hot hand. And Meister is going to be called for the travel. 29-24, Garrigan with her largest lead of the game here in the Class 1A state championship. And Newell Fonda has been cruising all season. Winning by an average margin of nearly 43 points per game. Winners of 53 straight. Garrigan has one loss this year. It was to West Hancock. Lost by one, but also avenged that loss later in the year. And West Hancock was here as a 2A qualifier. And that's a big foul. That's going to be against Crooks. That's her second. So you got the two freshmen for Garrigan, Joyce and Crooks, with two fouls apiece. 
with a minute 37 to play here in the first half. Joyce has done a good job. She picked up those two fouls early, and so she's played the remainder of this half not picking up foul number three. So that is the seventh team foul on Garrigan. Newell Fonda in the bonus to the line with Bailey Sievers. Garrigan has not shot the ball well from the foul line. And a timeout going to be taken here by Bishop Garrigan. 1.35 to play. Let's go inside of the Newell Fonda huddle and hear from their head coach, Dick Jungers. We haven't taken advantage of that yet, okay? So, we don't got something in transition. I would take it right at her, okay? Take it right at her and look for someone cutting on a bounce pass or something, okay? Hey, this is exactly what we want, okay? This is exactly what we want. Here we go. Team on three. One, two, three. They want to be challenged. Yeah. I know that's exactly what they want. I, I love that, that the Coach Junger said that. That's exactly what they want. I think they want to look. He said if they don't have the break, then take it right at the defense and then look for your cutters. They might try to take it right at Crook, see if they can get her to pick up foul number three before half. Well, one of the things he told us is he wanted to toughen up his schedule for next year. Cedar Rapids Gazette has something called Rivalry Saturday where they match up teams from all over the state. He's shopping for a 4A or 5A team for next year. Audie Crook says, right now, I got you. 23 here in the first half. Seven-point lead for Garrigan. And a behind-the-back pass that goes awry. And the trap of Garrigan is just as effective as the Newell Fonda pressure. The 15-footer off the mark for Garrigan. And so is that pass as it's deflected out. Good hands by Laura Leonard. <laughs> That's twice this week that they've thrown the ball to me that uh, I was wide open. <laughs> Some more subs coming into the game. For Newell Fonda, Legault will check back in. Also back in is Sievers, who has the ball right now, along with Maggie Walker. Garrigan also going to their bench. Amanda Miller will check back into the game. She's in for Crooks. They're going a little smaller, but this way they get more rest for Crooks. Get her out of there so she doesn't pick up foul number three. Here's Morenz. She'll attack and get the bucket. Now, and Amanda Miller did everything that she could do, went straight up and down, and now they turn it over. And a hard foul, Myers on Bailey Sievers will send her to the line with 30 seconds to play. It's a five-point lead here for Garrigan. This first half has been flying by, but we've seen a lot of good things here in the 1A title game, and Audie Crooks will quickly come back up to the scorer's table. The free throw there by Sievers. Also coming back in, Emma Fogarty. Averaging about 15 minutes per game off the bench is Fogarty. About how long do you think those two rests that Audie Cook and Crooks have had? <laughs> I think both of them totaled maybe 10 seconds. That seat's not too warm <laughs> on the bench. Free throws made by Bailey Sievers. It's back to a three-point game. Newell Fonda's largest lead was five early on. Garrigan just had their largest lead a moment ago at seven. They'll dump it into Crooks. It's off of her fingertips out of bounds. Now they're going to quickly get Crooks out there. They, they put her out there because they wanted the exact play that they had right there. A little lob pass into her. She couldn't hang on to it. Now you get her to the bench and play defense. Three-point game. 15 to go, first half. Sievers finds her sister on the baseline. Overshot the hoop, the putback not there, and a foul here on Fogarty. That'll be her second. And that's the ninth team foul on Garrigan with 7.1 to go in the first half. To the line with Maggie Walker and she uncorks the first free throw here. And Crooks comes back in. Yeah, with an opportunity to score right before halftime, 
you bring in Audie Crooks. See if they can get her the ball down low. They've got to get by the first wave of pressure, though, first. One point game. Joyce in backcourt. And she'll be fouled and will go to the line to shoot free throws here. Garrigan in the single bonus. And on that pressure, you want to make sure you get over, step out on the, on the sideline, out of bounds, to give yourself another defender. And that didn't happen that time. Joyce was able to find some room between her and the Newell Fonda pressure, drive by it, and draw the foul. Maggie Walker just picked up the foul, her second. Joyce at the line. 70% free throw shooter. Had a season high earlier this year of 35 against Cherokee. Also plays softball, volleyball, and track. She had a big game in the semifinals. Came up with 23 points in that semifinal game on 10 of 18 shooting. Played much of the first half and two fouls. Now she'll sit. Madison Meister will come back in for her. Audie Crooks is out. Amanda Miller is back in. 3.9 to go in the first half. In backcourt, here are the Mustangs. This is Larson at the horn. And Bishop Garrigan trying to do something that hasn't happened since 2018. And that's knockoff Newell Fonda. They have a three-point lead, does Garrigan. And let's go to Paul Yeager, who's standing by. Thank you very much, BJ. The Bishop Garrigan team shot 67% from the field in the first quarter. They only went down five percentage points in the second quarter for a half shoot of 62%. Coach Brandon Schwab, head coach of Bishop Garrigan, joins us now. Coach, if I told you you were shooting 62%, are you surprised? Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're shooting 62%. Yeah, I'm surprised. But uh, you know what? A lot of them shots are also pretty close ones to the basket, too. Three so to four feet. Audie helps. Crooks is huge uh, for a player for you inside. Physically, too. Uh, she's a difference maker. What is it that's working so well with her uh, tonight? You know, our, uh, our guard, Kaylin and... Um, Kaylin and Molly are doing a great job of breaking the press. And like we said, when we break the press, Audie's one-on-one -on, -one on the backside. And, and that's what we got to keep doing is handling the ball in the, in the backcourt and, and attacking them in the front court into the post. And uh, if we're going to have success in the second half, that's got to stay the game plan. All right. Thank you so very much, Coach. Appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. All right. That's head coach Brandon Schwab of the Bishop Garrigan. They lead here at half. Great 1A game. And we have a different twist tonight to our halftime show. Let's go downstairs for a, uh, a new look here at halftime. The Iowa Skippers will now perform a jump rope routine. Ladies and gentlemen, the oh, Iowa are Skippers. You ready?
Ladies and gentlemen, huge round of applause for the Iowa Skippers. Great job, everyone. What a great show. Ah, oh, that was neat. All right, 50 years ago, the Montezuma Bravettes made history with back-to-back -back championships. Over the last four years, the team fought their way back to the tournament in hopes of reliving that former glory with standout guard Shatea Wettering leading the way. Iowa PBS sports producer Patrick Boberg ventured to Powashi County to follow Montezuma's journey. The potential for greatness lies in every child. For some, it might be academics, computer programming, or performing arts. But for Montezuma's Shatia Wettering, it's clear to see she is great at basketball. Basketball has paved a path to many accomplishments for Shatia, including a junior national championship in club ball, signing as a recruit to play at the University of Iowa, and leading the Bravettes back to 1A prominence with back-to-back -back appearances in the state tournament. And all of this started with a grade school activity in a community gym. I was nine years old. It actually happened in this gym. Uh, they started like an upward uh, basketball program here. It was actually pretty fun. I mean, my dad is huge with basketball and he kind of got me started into it. He, um, that's how we basically have a basketball family. I think it was about like 2010 when the Upward program started here. They would wear the wristbands uh, so that they would know who to, who to guard from the sidelines. I would always uh, encourage her to steal the pass. It's things like that that she picked up on and that she thought, wow, I can really do this. So that was kind of exciting to see her grow that way. You could see the love of the game more and more through time. And then with friends in the community, you know, they would call each other and say, hey, let's all go to the family center and we can put a game together, you know. Actually in this gym one time, my dad would not let me leave until I had the correct form on my free throw. It was just, uh, and I remember it was even through tears and I finally did it and it was just a breakthrough and it was, it was amazing. I mean, I honestly don't know if I'd even be in this situation without them. As great as Shatia is on the court, she is actually the latest in a long line of Montezuma standout players. Going as far back as 50 years ago, when the Bravettes won back-to-back -back state championships. But Shatia doesn't need to look nearly that far to find local inspiration. Her closest parallel is coincidentally drawing up plays on the sideline. So I came in 92 and played 92 to 94 here because my school closed and I chose to come to Montezuma and just loved what this school brought for myself, for my family. I played the game of six on six the last year and then played five on five and this place allowed me, Montezuma allowed me the opportunity to go on and play college athletics as well, coach collegiately and then come back home which is what's awesome. She was a post, obviously, at Iowa State, and I was obviously a post, but in 1A, I don't have that opportunity to be a post as much because they need me as a guard, and it really helped me be really versatile as a basketball player. During her time as a Brave Ed, Coach Burgess left her mark by pushing school records so out of reach that they are still standing decades later. With Shatia's final season rounding out, her play is becoming equally as memorable. But seeing as basketball is a team sport, her supporting cast is incredibly important. I mean, we have Elise Bolton, who's a tremendous shooter and really took over the point guard role for us. Uh, Maddie McCaig and Shelby Conger have come in and just played and had a tremendous uh, senior year. And we just got a good core of kids from top to bottom. And Shatia's a great player. There is no doubt about it. She is 5'11 and she is a lefty. Well, my position kind of varies. I play the one through five. Whatever she needs me to do, I will do for her, obviously, and the teams. And she leads us in points. She leads us in three-point successes. She leads us in rebounds. She leads us in assists. She leads us in steals. But ultimately, she leads us with her selflessness and her ability to make sure that everyone plays to the fullest potential because she sets them up extremely well. While not all players are destined for collegiate play, the game provides a similar rush for practically all who put on the jersey. I play basketball because I love the energy and the environment and just um, being able to compete every day is so much fun. My, my teammates just make it feel like 
Like, that's the only thing happening right now. Like, it's just basketball. I play basketball because, like, I love my teammates. We play for each other, and it's just a blast. Have fun, compete, and I like to win, too. So, like, that's always a plus. <laughs> Montezuma is a really small town. Like the support we have is a big reason we're so successful. It, it's like feels really special to play on this team because, like the older ladies that come into our games and watch us, they played. They had these uniforms on. I hope we're making them proud, and I just want to follow along in their footsteps. There's no doubt that we're obviously a basketball school. Having all those championships and all those things to look at really just helps set the stage for us and gives us that mentality that if we work hard enough, we can get there. Knowing her play will leave a lasting mark on Montezuma, Shatia makes sure to balance enjoying the moment while considering her local legacy. Honestly, I think it's the friendships you make and leaving an impact on other people to to basically strive to be kind of like you. And those people are likely already in the stands, as Shatia discovered her passion for basketball young, well before anyone knew what she would accomplish. This last year, we've kind of been going through some things and getting things together for graduation, and we found some really neat things that she wrote. Just, it really made me think about how long she'd actually had a desire for the sport. I am a basketball player. I wonder if I'm going to win all the games. I pretend I make lots and lots of baskets. I feel so rich when I play. I can touch the basket with my hand. I worry if someone gets hurt. I cry when I'm done with basketball. I cry when we win. I understand that it doesn't matter how wins or loses. <laughs> I say I can win, so I win. I dream I'm dribbling down the court and shoot. I try to do my best in basketball. I hope I can win the last basketball game on Saturday. A reminder that coverage of the Iowa Girls High School State Basketball Championships and halftime features like the one we just saw would not be possible without the support of Iowa PBS fans like you. Take a moment now to support this statewide network and become part of our team by making a pledge at iowapbs.org. Thank you very much for all those features and they're all available on our website. All right, we're now joined by the executive director of the Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union. That's Jean Berger. Hello, Jean. Good evening. How are you? I'm wonderful. I would like to say, again, a pretty darn good tournament, I it, think, right? Oh, it was a great tournament. Great crowds, great weather, great basketball. OK, so I want to ask you a couple things. We're seeing a freshman play right now, yes. outstanding. Mm -hmm. We've seen seniors play really well. Which one's more exciting for you to watch? Oh, freshmen. Why? Because it is it is what is to come. It's and, what I have to look forward to. And that gets people talking about, yes. did you see the freshmen do this? You know how Correct. many texts I've gotten in this first half alone of asking how tall Audie Crooks is? Yes. Did you know she just set a freshman scoring mark for Algona Garrigan tonight? There you go. See, you're know. always full of stats. I, I appreciate know. that. All right. <laughs> Earlier tonight, we crowned two champions. Last night had two champions. You've added the pink shirts. The girls have talked about how they wanted the pink shirts. That's the new thing. But the, the new thing was, is you were going through some, you needed to use some of this stuff here from the building. You put out nets. You didn't think the nets were good enough, so you gave them nets <laughs> to cut down. What's yeah. that all about? Well, you know, it's like the Kentucky Derby. You go to the winner's circle, you get your red roses. And uh, I missed that they didn't get to cut down nets because we had a game after after a game and I felt bad about getting them off the court to not celebrate. So I said to my good friends here at the arena, do you think we could cut down the net? <laughs> well, that's a look at North Scott, defending champs back to back. They are here, they know where to go. And who Gene is referring to is Chris Connolly, the general manager of the Iowa Event Center. Now, the two of you have been partnered together for a couple of years. We've been partnered together with you now. This is, I think, year seven of this. So, Chris, Gene calls and says, what do you think? Should we should we keep seeing each other for a little while? How'd that all start? <laughs> uh, we could be happier. Um, to do a 10-year deal with the girls' union, 
you talk about the tradition, and for me as a venue manager, to host this tournament on a yearly basis and have over 60,000 fans for the week, it's incredible. So we couldn't be happier. I think uh, if you talk to Gene, Gene started out with six, and I'm the one that proposed ten. <laughs> so, no, honestly, we couldn't be happier, and what a great relationship. All right, so last night, though, your crew had to work a little extra because it was so full for the start of that 5 a game. And I've said this to Gene before, they had to lift up the, the curtain behind us because he had to go to the third level. Yeah, that's uh, that's two years in a row, and we <laughs> thought ahead. We knew we had two great matchups last night, so we were ready to go, and I'd say most of the 200 level was full. So, man, what a great atmosphere on a Friday night. Two incredible games. Uh, just can't say how excited we are to have a 10-year deal with the girls' union. Really good. So we have freshman stars. We have senior moments. We've cut the nets. We've had a partnership extended both from a broadcast and from an event status. So what's next, Gene? Who knows? <laughs> Later tonight, we'll get the um, group together. Um, you know, I think it's just our concentration on the in-venue experience. I'd like to get back to people coming to the Girls State Basketball Tournament to enjoy the tournament and not just by who's playing. So we'll figure out something with our venue partner. We've got 10 years. <laughs> I, I can't wait to see what you come up with. Chris, Gene, thank you so very much for a great week. Thank, thank you guys you. very much. Thanks, All right. Now, part of the experience here is seeing these great basketball teams. Teams, and one of the things is getting to talk to great basketball coaches. Right now, Dick Jungers joins us, head coach at Newell Fonda. Coach, you had to sit through the extra uh, halftime, but you're used to that. You've been here before. But the question is, how do you prepare for a 6-3 center? <laughs> you know, you try to find a 6-3 center of your own. <laughs> That's no. a good way to go. She's, Crooks, uh, she's, she's incredible tonight. She's she's very good. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we're we trying to pressure the ball and make those passing lanes tighter, which we are forcing some turnovers. I feel like on offense, we're just kind of, uh, I'm going to just say we're just a little bit tight on offense, uh, trying to score eight points on a shot. And we just got to <laughs> calm down and uh, do the things we need to do. Uh, uh, I feel like uh, we've had some good looks. Some of them didn't fall down. And uh, hopefully uh, we make some adjustments in the second half to get a few of those shots fall down for us. You're an old softball coach. It's one pitch at a time, right? Absolutely. It's the same thing. So, okay, you said we caught you in a timeout, and you said we have them exactly where we want them. What do you mean? Well, just we had a, a nice pace going. And, you know, uh, again, if we finish a few more opportunities, uh, you know, maybe we can create some more off that. But then uh, uh, they were able to get some transition points and uh, a little bit of foul trouble. And uh, so, again, you know, that's that's part of the nature of the beast down here. And we're going to have to find a way to uh, get the advantages back on our side. All right. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate your time. Hey, thank you. All right. That's Head Coach Dick Jungers of the Newell Fonda Mustangs. And uh, they're trailing right now at the half. We got a great half. And let's have half number two, B.J. Shaven, Lauren Leonard, back down on the floor for, uh, I hope you got your breath in, B.J. We sure do. But when you take a look at the first half statistics here, Garrigan Paul, as you mentioned, 62% from the field. Newell Fonda right at 33. Points in the paint, though. This is where Bishop Garrigan has been so strong all year. And I think that's something they're going to continue to do. Newell Fonda has not been able to slow that part of the game down. And I think Bishop Garrigan is going to continue to go inside. I think you're going to see some adjustments, though, defensively from Newell Fonda. Well, how about Audie Crooks in that first half becoming the all-time leader by a freshman in the state of Iowa in five-player history with the most points in her freshman season, surpassing Ellie Ruffridge for that mark. The former standout at Pocahontas now at Missouri State. So here we go. The table is set. It's a three-point lead for Garrigan over Newell Ponda. Out on the floor as the Golden Bears have the ball to begin the second half. It is Noonan, Meister, Joyce, Myers, and Crooks. And Audie goes to work, misses the bunny. Her follow-up not there. And Newell Fonda will scrap for the rebound. They've got Bailey and Macy Seavers out on the floor, along with Maggie Walker, Megan Morenz, and Ella Larson. Madison Meister picks up the foul. For Bishop Garrigan, that's her first. Couple of players in foul trouble here for Garrigan to start the second half. You've got Crooks with two, Joyce for two. Everybody else hanging around the one mark. And a steal here by Meister. And this one's going to be kicked out of bounds. It will belong to Garrigan. Newell Fonda continues to drive baseline. And then they get pushed underneath the basket trying to throw it out. Again, that's where Crooks makes a difference defensively. She is a stopper in the middle, and if you take it in too far, 
then you're going to possibly turn it over. And that's what Newell Fonda has done when they've driven the baseline. They'll dump it into Crooks and a three second violation going to be called against Audie Crooks. And a turnover here by Bishop Garrigan and that is the sixth. As into the front court goes Newell Fonda. The kick out the three ball by Walker is off the mark and it's going to be out of bounds. Well, fun. I thought that one might have been partially deflected. Nick Younger's asking the same thing. Well, I, I would agree with Coach Jungers that they're a little tight on offense. They We've not seen that kind of offensive flow from them throughout the state tournament. And so they need to get back to where they're relaxed and playing their game. And there's somebody that maybe wasn't as relaxed in the first half as she looked like on that shot, rises up and knocks down a big jumper. The answer by Larson, not there. And the rebound to Morenz. Six point lead for Garrigan. They had a seven point lead late in the first half. Joyce to work. The dump down to Crooks. That's money. Well, obviously they have worked on that a lot because it's the dribble drive and then the floater pass where Crooks is just waiting for it. And the jumper by Macy Sievers. Sievers doing a good job of pulling up before she took it in too far. Was able to stay away from Crooks and the extension of the arms. Able to get the shot up over the top. New we'll find a team all season that has been down rarely, if at all, as Crooks gets the nice entry pass and puts it up and in. Eight point lead again. You have passing like that, you're going to get the defense out of position. That left Crooks wide open. 25, make it 27 in the game for Crooks. The three, not there by Larson. Crooks with the rebound. And Myers into the front court. Crooks with the putback. <laughs> you know, Myers took it all the way in, saw the opening, came up a little short, but again, Crooks right there, grabbing the garbage, putting it back in. This one tied up, it's gonna stay with Newell Fonda. And a timeout gonna be taken by the Mustangs. Dick Jungers wants to talk things over. They'll have three timeouts remaining, but this has been the Audie Crook Show. She has 29 in the game, and the freshman is going on. And you can see her position herself. They're trying to front her, and she just gets enough position. There, she's wide open. Nobody around her. And that was because the passing was so good around the perimeter. And there, on the offensive glass, just in great position keeping that ball. That's the one good thing that she, well, she does more than one good thing. She does a lot of good things, but she keeps the ball up above her head. A lot of times you see centers bring that ball down around their hip after they pull a rebound. She keeps that ball up there and takes her right back to the glass. The Golden Bears feeling good right now. Their largest lead of the game at 10. And speaking of Bears, the teddy bear on the bench. This was bought by the team back in their 2018 appearance here at the state tournament. They got him out at the mall here in Des Moines. They're getting him a date this year, but it's been kind of their good luck charm. But would you believe in their opening round game, they actually left him back at home. And the, uh, the cheerleaders that went back and forth to Algona and Des Moines had to go to someone's house and pick it up. That that could have been a problem if the Bear hadn't made it down to the state tournament. They were lucky to get by that first round. Can't wait to see what the date looks like. <laughs> this ball knocked out of bounds. It's going to belong to Newell Fonda. Meister getting active in the passing zone. Mary Walker into the second half of the first time, joined by Laney Hograve and Elliot Lago also back into the game. Legault 
And Bo hit a big shot in the first half. She's in there. She can shoot it from distance. That nobody is able to get an open look out on the perimeter. Those defenders are doing a great job of covering up Newell Fonda. I think coming into the game, you could count on your hands how many times Newell Fonda went one and done on a trip. And this ball going to be poked away by Larson. Ella will bring it ahead. Now the three. Myers rips down the rebound for Bishop Garrigan. Out ahead to Meister. Count it! Got the running game going, and what a look by Myers to look up the floor, find Meister, and then what a finish. Gets the contact from Walker. Gets that ball to crawl over the rim. 12-point lead. Meister to the line and cans the free throw. Right now, they have Newell Fonda back on their heels. Meister with four in this game. The jump stop and Myers with the steal. And what was the difference there and what changed that whole setup in that play was Crooks in the middle. All she did was get straight up and down. Here she goes again and her put back not there, but Audie Crooks will go to the line. She is going from one end to the other, made a stop defensively, gets down, gets in position, and her teammates find her. Brooks, one of four from the line. But you look at the 29 points. And for Newell Fonda, a lot of bodies coming in and out, trying to find that perfect combination. Larson back in. Brooks is second. Now with an even 30. She had a. Season high this year, 40 against Humboldt. And a turnover. Joyce. They don't look like freshmen, for sure. They sure don't. They're not playing like freshmen. And right now, Newell Fonda getting a little bit of their own medicine. This is what they normally do to opponents. Get in the passing lane, harass you defensively, get the steals, get the layups. And that's what Bishop Garrigan is doing right now. Average win margin, we talked about it. Now a charge called against Myers. She'll pick up her second of 43 points a game. Their closest game was their opening game of the season in which they won by 10 against Western Christian. And a 10-0 run right now for Brandon Schwab and his Golden Bears. And things are unraveling here. Well, and Seavers just took her eye off the ball and it went off her knee, went through her hands. But hey, they get a steal. And Seavers. Bucket. And that's a foul on Joyce. That's going to be her third. So they have the mistake early on, but then they get the steal, and they're able to cash in on that steal. Brooks with another rebound. 15 on the night. And Meister cashes in on this end with a layup. They're just beating them down the floor right now and just doing it by passing. Brooks disrupts, and Noonan cleans up. Oh, and Meister. She went hard Ooh. out of bounds, and her head Hit came the... in contact with the knee of cameraman down there. Not our guy, Marlon. What's up? You OK? But man. She got knocked and knocked hard, did Meister. Gonna get up. 
And I'm sure they're going to do some tests. Yeah, that uh, she came in contact pretty hard with his knee down there on the out of bounds line and yep, yep. Might, have, might have had her bell rung just a little bit. So I'm sure they're going to check her out, make sure that she's okay, able to come back into a ball game. So coming in for her is going to be Emma Fogarty. Larson will work it. She'll take the three. Joyce is going to pull up here. And a turnover. Now that would have been a situation where she didn't have the initial break, go ahead and pull it out and then wait for everybody to get set up. And this is going to be off of Fogarty. Newell Fonda will get it back here. Minute 42, Laura. How important is this next minute 42 for Newell Fonda? I think it's huge for Newell Fonda. They need to come up with a couple of baskets. They need to get back into doing what they do and what has brought them to this point and won them 54 straight. They've got to get back to that pressure defense, getting the steals, and converting those steals. They just have not been able to do that in this ball game. And a foul here. As going to the line will be Bailey Sievers. I think there's some discussion on who that foul might be against. It's on Crooks. That's going to be her third. So the two freshmen for Bishop Garrigan, Crooks and Joyce, each now with three, with a minute 27 to play here in the third. And the free throw by Bailey Sievers. Had seven points in the semifinals. Just three here tonight. Knocks them both down. They're doing a good job of keeping the ball in the middle against this pressure. Brooks, what a great feed from Joyce. Joyce is just taking her time, weaving her way through the defense and keeping it in the middle, not allowing herself to be pushed to one of the sidelines or the other. Larson gets her own rebound. Tries to pass out of it. And Sievers three is there. That's a big shot for Sievers. 13 point game. The three on this end, Noonan. And a rebound to Macy Sievers. She'll attack Morenz. And she'll shoot two at the line. Able to get the running game going. Nobody came up and stopped the ball for Bishop Garrigan. That allowed them to get the break going. And that puts Morenz on the line. You can tell that these players are tired. The legs aren't there. They've been working hard on both ends. And both of these teams have been working hard on both ends. Crooks will check out Aswell Myers for Bishop Garrigan. And Molly Joyce now with four personal fouls. She's going to remain in the game with the ball right now. Up 12, closing seconds. And a whistle here. It's going to be against Newell Fonda. And Joyce will go to the line to shoot two. Joyce shows you what kind of ball handling skills that she has behind the back dribble, able to take it in right into the middle of the defense. A little bit of a risky move as she has four fouls, goes up and gets contact, but you never know when you get in there into the paint, could there be a charge called and she could have been out of this ball game. It's both free throws, now with 12. 
And coming into the game is Grace Ellsbecker for Molly Joyce. Also coming back in is Amanda Miller. Madison Meister also back into the game, checked out just a few moments ago as she took that shot to the head. Checked out and cleared to play. 14-point lead here for Garrigan. Mustangs closing seconds of the quarter. Legault. And it's going to be touched up out of bounds by Sievers with 0.7 tenths of a second here in the quarter. And here's a steal. That's going to be the end of the quarter. So would you believe Bishop Garrigan, the three seed, besting the top seed, Newell Fonda, by 14 with eight minutes to play, but it's been the Audie Crook show. And well, Newell Fonda trying to hang around here, Laura. Well, they are, and they're going to have to do it this way by getting shots beyond the arc if they can, and they're gonna have to get that defense going for them again. Let's hear what Brandon Schwab is telling his team for Bishop Garrigan. With this lead, okay? I want, I want you to take it out. Uh, you've got the split. You're where Molly's position is. Relax, okay? Hey, relax. Listen, I, you keep attacking them, but attack, attack under control. She's still one-on-one -on, -one on this backside. We've got to make eye contact on the reversals. You got to make eye contact in transition, okay? We, yeah, we can run a half-court offense, okay? You know how to run Kansas from the one, get it? Double screen, we can get a touch there, okay? Hey, listen, eight minutes, but take it a minute at a time. It's gonna take, you need to get out on the three and make them go one and done, okay? Handle the ball, let's go. All right, Laura, break that down. Well, the thing that I liked about it was take it one minute at a time. Eight minutes can seem like a long time here in this fourth quarter when you're leading and you have the state championship in your grasp, so take it one minute at a time. And you heard them that they're going to take some time. They're going to run their half-court offense to run a little time off the clock. What a week it's been here at the state tournament, including this 1A championship game. As we look at the statistics through three quarters of play, Bishop Garrigan, 21 of 34 from the field. Newell Fonda has only made four three-pointers, but they've taken 24. Well, and that's part of their game plan. They're going to continue to shoot the three-pointers. They're not going to go away from that. That will get them back into a ball game a lot quicker if they can start connecting on the three-point shots. They need to figure out a way to slow down that interior pass to Crooks and try to keep her away from the rim. Myers for three. And a foul going to be called here on Meister. Well, it is daylight savings time eve, and we'll remind everybody to turn your clocks ahead coming up tomorrow. We know for Bishop Garrigan, they really want to crank up that clock right now. How can they do so, eat a lot of this clock down with a 14-point lead here under the fourth? Well, they have to be a little more patient with their offensive sets than they were on that last possession and have to keep that clock running, play good defense, make Newell Fonda work on the offensive end. And boy, I'm telling you what, they just missed Bailey Seavers underneath. She was wide open, but they had their back turned. See, they're making Newell Fonda use a lot of clock here by the way they're playing defense. So that's helping them out. And the three off the mark for Mary Walker. A lot of pressure in the turnover. Seavers with the left hand. And the one thing that Bishop Garrigan can't do is start to panic when the pressure comes. You've got to be able to want the ball in your hands and make sure you get the ball into the front court. So there's the steal. That makes you hurry up. With the pressure in the back court, you get the steal, you get the easy bucket. That's just the fourth team foul called on Newell Fonda. The Mustangs are in the bonus the rest of the way. Each team with three timeouts remaining possession arrow in favor of Newell Fonda. Great hands by Macy Sievers disrupting that play. And now with four fouls coming back into the game is going to be Molly Joyce. 
Well, you do want that ball handling ability in there. You've got to have her in there to take care of this pressure. She has done a good job all game long, except for there, that cross court pass. That is just one that you don't want to do, and, and you know that this defense is going to be ready to pounce, and this is where they're going to make their comeback. And a foul, and that's it for Joyce. Laura, I don't know about having her out there, but Molly Joyce is going to have to wait this one out. That's her fifth personal foul. And you saw the ill-advised half-court, cross-court pass that led to the steal and the bucket, and then they get another steal. So now, all of a sudden, this defense is starting to heat up, and the pressure is starting to get to Bishop Garrigan. So Joyce is going to check out, scoring 12 points, five assists. And the free throw is good by Macy Sievers. It's now a nine-point lead with 6.33 to play. This one's got some drama building. You know, and that's, that's a learning moment, I think, for Molly Joyce. Understanding the situation of the game, that they need you in there as a ball handler. And you've got to be smart when you have three fouls when you have four fouls. The officials talking things over with one another. A timeout was called. There was a foul called, but was the timeout called before the foul? Let's go to the Newell Fonda huddle. Again, we're in a, we're going to be in 12 to 9 here. They're going to, again, start throwing them up over the top, okay? But we want to keep attacking, okay? We want to keep attacking that. Now, offensively, okay, get that ball to high post, okay? Start sending the cutters through, okay? And otherwise, inside out, looking for open jump shots, okay? Let's go get this. Let's go get this, okay? Team on well, defensively, they're going to try to deny the post, which is very hard to do, and they haven't been able to do it, but they're going to make some adjustments. They want to make sure that they have somebody in front and in back and make them really work to get the good hey. angles to get the ball into the post. At one point, Garrigan had a 16-point lead a few moments ago. Now down to nine. They go to Crooks. Misses the first. Rebound tipped out, and the Golden Bears got it. It's loose. And Myers is going to be fouled here by Maggie Walker. The intensity starting to pick up on both sides, especially for Newell Fonda after being rattled. Being down by as many as 16. Well, they have gone back to what has served them so well this season, and that is their pressure defense, getting in passing lanes, causing problems, even getting the ball in right there. Maggie Walker of Newell Fonda just picked up her fourth. Crooks puts it up and in. I'm not even sure how she caught that pass. There were three white jerseys around her. She went up and was able to pull that in and make the move to the glass. Myers with the rebound for Garrigan, and now a foul called on Larson. And that'll be the sixth team foul on Newell Fonda. For Larson, that's going to be her third. So you still have to inbound in the back court. You want to make sure you get some help in the front court. Laura, would you start fouling Crooks when she has the ball in the block like that? This one's going to be tied up. Possession are in favor of Newell Fonda. You know what? That's a good point. I mean, it's, er it's still a lot of time in this ball game. But you have enough bodies over there on the bench that you could possibly do that. Fogarty flexing her right knee quite a bit. As Newell Fonda will put it in play. Lorenz left it short. And the rebound to Fogarty to Crooks. Couple of dangerous passes, got away with it. Star guard for Bishop Garrigan out of the game, fouled out. And this is a steal by Sievers, and she'll be fouled. 
So the Mustangs will come down to the other end. The clock stopped with 5.18 to play. A nine-point deficit and to the line with Macy Seavers. I think Noonan's going to pick up that foul, just trying to slow them down as they got the steal. And things have not flowed as smoothly on offense since Joyce has been out of the lineup and on the bench with those five fouls. Seavers now four of six from the line. 70% free throw shooter on the year, and there's Joyce. Terrific game, but fouled out having to nervously watch this one end. Will it go in her team's favor? And this is the difference right here. They don't have her in the lineup. She was doing such a marvelous job of getting the ball, keeping the ball in the middle dribbling through the pressure defense and getting the ball into the front court. Now you have players in the game that aren't as sure-handed with the dribble and bringing the ball through that pressure. So they're going to have to do it by passing to get that ball into the front court. 5.08 remaining. In backcourt with Meister. They find Crooks. What great hands. Can't get it to fall, and a free a foul going to be called here on Audie Crooks, and that's going to be her fourth. Oh my, 457 to play. Garrigan leads it by nine. And Newell Fonda gets to come right back down to the free throw line and try to score without the clock running. Audie Crook's going to go to the bench, going to take a little time. They've got a little bit of a lead here. We'll see how long she stays on the bench. And we'll see what Newell Fonda does if they turn up the heat a little bit more than what they have already. So at the line with Larson. <laughs> This one's getting very interesting. 4.57 to play. It's a seven-point game. For the Class 1A state championship, 5A went to Johnston last night. The 3A to Bishop Helan. The 4A title game earlier today went to North Scott. North Lynn, a winner in the 2A title game. And now the officials will talk it over. Raleigh Weavers, Sean Peterson, and Raleigh says it's going to stay with Bishop Garrigan. But you notice now that Joyce is out of the ball game. They are being allowed. That was very close to being <laughs> over and back. They are getting pushed to the sidelines where Joyce was bringing the ball into the middle. So that allows them to get that trap set. And Myers will go to the foul line. A 54% free throw shooter on the year. As Crooks getting some time to rest. And the rebound to Morenz. Newell Fonda down, trying to win their 54th straight game and win back-to-back -back state championships. They really want to make sure on this possession that they get something good, get a good look, get a high percentage shot. And a foul called against Garrigan. And the foul going against Amanda Miller. That'll be her first. To the line with Macy Seavers. Newell Fonda, a very good free throw shooting team, right at 70% on the season. Larson will come back into the contest. Junger seeing his team trying to come back from 16 down here in the second half. And they've made it a five-point game with 4.20 to play. Bishop Garrigan trying to do it without their star guard and their star center on the bench. 
star guard Joyce out, fouled out. And sitting on the bench is Crooks with four fouls. This three goes through by Larson. Wow! Got the friendly roll, just stops as a trailer on the play right at the three-point line, the top of the key. Got the friendly bounce and a big bucket. Myers can't hit the shot, and the rebound lost out of bounds. It will belong to Bishop Garrigan. Audie Crooks ready to come back into the game with four fouls. Her team with a two-point lead on an 18-4 run by Newell Fonda. Maggie Walker will come back in for the Mustangs. She checks in for Macy Sievers. Mary Walker will check out. Also back into the game is going to be Mia Walker as Myers hits a big three from the wing. That is a huge bucket. And she had Maggie Walker right in her face. They faked the handoff, a couple of dribbles, pulled it out, and then turned around and nailed it. And now they force a turnover. Back-to-back -back threes here. Newell Fonda with the big three from Larson. Only to see Garrigan answer it on the other end. See the little kickback, toe up at the three-point line. A little bounce off the front of the rim, fake the handoff. Little step back three, nothing but net. Meister will track it down, now will attack. Larson lost it off of her fingertips. Garrigan will hold on to it. 3.06 remaining, it's a five point game. If you're just joining us now, shame on you. <laughs> this has been a classic in the 1A title game on Iowa PBS statewide. All 99 counties getting a chance to witness this one. It's tied up possession arrow in favor of Newell Fonda. With Laura Leonard, I am BJ Shaven sitting here courtside for the 1A title game. The Mustangs go back to their bench again. Macy Sievers will check back in. She's been the spark plug defensively for the Mustangs here in the second half when they were down by 16 and unraveling. The sophomore really stepped it up. Here's Morenz. Sievers to work. Sievers saw Crooks coming up to defend, pulls up and hits the mid-range jumper. Myers gonna be fouled by Bailey Sievers. The inbound, and then you see Crooks coming up, goes straight up and down, knowing she has those four fouls, can't come any further. And what a good job of seeing what the defense was doing, pulling up and knocking down that shot in the middle of the lane. Myers two of three from the line here in the title game. Last year, you mentioned she averaged over 20 points per game. Her role changed. She was okay with it. And now having a chance to push her team to a title. She's performed very well here in the state tournament. 12 points in the quarterfinals, 13 in the semifinals, and is having to step up big here in this ballgame. All goes three off the mark. The ball hitting the deck. Meister with the quick hands. Morenz gets the steal, and Myers with the foul, who's slow to get up. Everybody going after the loose ball, bodies on the floor. And it looks like Myers came down hard, maybe on Morenz's foot. And Morenz able to hit the first free throw and a timeout gonna be taken here by Bishop Garrigan. They'll have two remaining. Each team into the bonus, 61-57 or score. Garrigan with the lead. Let's hear what Newell Fonda head coach Dick Jungers is saying. We don't want to foul. We just want to play good defense, okay? Get them foul on the sides. Bring the jumps, okay? Bring the jumps. We still want to speed them up, okay? So, still in like 12 to 9, okay? Still in 12 to 9. They're starting to bring back flashes, so we just want to communicate those, okay? Everybody understand that? Now, offensively, okay? Next time down, I want one game Ella. Ella, float into the high post area, okay? Send a cutter, pump fake, take it at her, okay? There we go. 
Let's go get this. Let's finish this one. Team on three. One, two, three. New old Fonda trying to win their third state championship in school history. Bishop Garrigan going for their first ever title. It's a four point game. What do you think about down the stretch here what coach was relaying to his team? They're going to stay in that pressure defense, speed them up. They know that they can do that when they jump on defense and they get them over the half court line. They bring that extra defender. They jump at them, force some bad passes. They want to force them into turnovers. Some foul trouble, though, big time mounting for Garrigan. Molly Joyce, their outstanding freshman, is out as Lorenz hits the free throw. Both Myers and Crooks has four fouls. Newell Fonda with one player in foul trouble. That would be Maggie Walker with four. Meister caught up in backcourt, and she's going to take a step. That's going to cost her team a possession here. It's a three-point game with 2.25 to play. The Mustangs trying to erase a 16-point deficit. You could see on that possession how Bailey Seavers turned and forced Meister to the sidelines, and then that's where the trap came. That was not a misprint. 30 turnovers in the game by Garrigan. Crooks hits the deck. Morenz for three. Hits the side of the backboard, and the putback is there. It's a one-point game as Maggie Walker nails the jumper. Myers pass going away. The Mustangs are going to go for the lead. Seavers. Been able to climb all the way back in. Never really panicked. Maybe did not have their good offensive game in the first half. But now here in the fourth quarter, they certainly have had their defense turn their offense, or turn to offense and turn up points. How about the go-ahead bucket here by the Seaver sisters? The good lead pass, the nice bounce pass that led to the go-ahead bucket, and something that they have been working for for the entire game. They have played from behind from almost the opening tip. Maggie Walker just picked up the foul. That's her fifth. She'll check out of the game to the line with Kaylin Myers. The junior will tow it. Big free throws down the stretch and we're tied up at 62. Oh. See if Bishop Garrigan puts on any kind of pressure. One point lead here for Garrigan. In the paint, they try to attack Crooks. And I believe that's going to be a foul. We'll wait and see. I think it might be on Myers, Myers. reaching in. <laughs> You're right. They went right at Crooks, trying to get her out of the ball game. Wait a second. If it's on Myers, that's, that's going to be her fifth. Whoa, two of the three stars that Garrigan has, Myers and Joyce out of the game, fouling out. Crooks on the floor with five and to the line with Bailey Sievers. Well, when Joyce went out of the ball game, Myers was the one that was the primary ball handler. Now she's out of the ball game. So they're going to have to do this by committee against this Newell Fonda full court pressure. And that's a tall <laughs> ask for players that don't get a lot of minutes and don't see a lot of full court pressure like this all season long. 90 seconds remain for the tie. Bailey Sievers. Meister going to have to handle it. Down to the corner, they attack with Ellsbecker. Crooks had it lost, still tied. Now Ellsbecker for three, can't get the shot to fall. And the rebound to Walker. And Newell Fonda will turn it over. Macy Sievers could not handle that pass. And you see the sophomore say, my bad. 
What a stretch. Tied up at 63. Noonan will put it in play. Only one timeout left for Bishop Garrigan, so they have to be very smart about what they're going to do, especially on inbounds. They were able to get it in there, or if they get trapped, you don't really want to use that last timeout, but if you want to save the possession, you're going to have to use it. What a championship. Inside of 55 seconds to play, and Meister going to be called for a travel. 32 turnovers by Bishop Garrigan. Coach Brandon Schwab is arguing that she kept her pivot foot, but just drugged the other foot, had a little stutter step with the other foot. Not going to win that argument. Now, do you hold for one? I don't know. Macy Sievers, let's see what she does. Crooks patrolling the interior. Lorenz for three. It's off the mark and the rebound to Larson. And a steal here by Fogarty. Caught up in backcourt. Fogarty will get it to Meister. Have to hurry it across the timeline and the timeout going to be taken here by Bishop Garrigan. Close to a 10 count. 22 seconds remain. Let's hear what the Golden Bears are talking about. Sit down. Hit. Sit down, relax. It's a full timeout. Hey, listen, 21 seconds. Everybody take a breath right now, okay? This is what we asked for. You have a shot with 21 seconds left. We need a bucket. We need to be strong with the ball and relax, okay? On the side here, stack on the side. Let, uh, let uh, Katie take it out. Stack with you two on the side, strong. Audie, you're right here in the corner, or on the block here, okay? Uh, uh, Ellsbecker, you're running across Audie's screen to the corner. You look to see if Ellsbecker's open, and then you're right into Audie. Otherwise, if they're behind, we can make pass to Audie. Look at both of them, Katie. Ellsbecker or Audie or back, all right? They want to make sure, first of all, you've got to get the ball inbounds. You don't have any timeouts left, so you have to make sure that you are stepping to the pass. You have to make sure if you're setting a screen, set a good hard screen so you can get the ball in. And then they're going to get Crooks on the block. They're going to run a cutter. Sounded like it was going to be Ellsbecker. They're going to run the cutter and try to get the shot. Crooks will handle it. Now to Fogarty. They'll get it into Crooks. Has it deflected away. Larson up with it. Here's Sievers to Morenz. And the lead in the championship for Newell Fonda. What? A game. What a game. Bishop Garrigan had the big lead. They got into foul trouble. Newell Fonda kept chipping away, chipping away. Bishop Garrigan had the ball with 21 seconds left, had the opportunity to get the last shot, turned it over, and Newell Fonda able to get the bucket with about two seconds left to go in the ball game. Outfitting for the senior Megan Morenz to hit the game winner to win their 54th straight game, their second straight state title. They end the fourth quarter on a 25 to 9 run. That is a comeback for the ages, and congratulations to Megan Morenz. You're right, the only senior on this team, and she comes up big. She just has been steady all game long and hits a huge huge bucket at the end of the ball game. You can see the drive down and a nice little drive pull up went right at Crooks. Crooks went straight up and down but she went up over the top and able to get the bank shot to go as time winds down. 
Macy Sievers leads the way for Newell Fonda with 25. Audie Crooks, a championship game high, 34. Let's go to the PA announcer, Tim Fitzpatrick. Your class 1A all tournament team. Presenting the awards is Craig Hill, president of the Iowa Farm Bureau. Joining him are members of the IGH SAU Board of Directors, Greg Eveling, Rana Fadness, Jim Beamer, Roger Francis, and Greg Dufault. On your Class A 1A All-Tournament team, from Newell Fonda, Maggie Walker. From Bishop Garrigan, Molly Joyce. From Newell Fonda, Ella Larson. From St. Ansgar, Haley Anderson. From Newell Fonda, Macy Seavers. And your 1A All-Tournament Team Captain, who set a new state record for most points scored in a single season by a freshman, breaking the old mark of 612 set by Pocahontas Area's Ellie Ruffridge in 2014, Bishop Garrigan's Audie Crooks. What an all-tournament team, no question. As you see them lined up right now, Audie Crooks being named the all-tournament team captain, Newell Fonda a winner, 65-63. Championships are not given, they are earned, and Newell Fonda earned theirs tonight after being down by as many as 16 to close it out the way that they did against the Garrigan team that had fought them tooth and nail all the way. What a championship. It was an amazing championship, and the way that Newell Fonda fought back, that is the true sign of a champion. So please help us recognize your 2020 Class 1A runner-up, the Bishop Garrigan Golden Bears and head coach Brennan Schwab. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for your 2020 Class 1A champion, the Newell Fonda Mustangs and head coach Dick Jungers. <laughs> Newell Fonda, your Class 1A state champion after last night's game in the 5A title game. I bet you were asked, I was asked a number of times, was that the best championship game you've seen? Well, well, it was maybe until the one we just witnessed here tonight. What a championship game. And it was a game that Bishop Garrigan dominated for most of the game. And then Newell Fonda able to kind of right the ship, got their defense going. Bishop Garrigan had a little foul trouble. That hurt them down the stretch. And Newell Fonda fought all the way back. And that's... Three state titles for Newell Fonda, 11 state tournament appearances. What a dynasty, I'm going to say it, a dynasty for Newell Fonda. What a weekend here on Iowa PBS. Let's go to Paul Yeager, who is standing by. Thank you very much, BJ. Thank you very much, Laura. And you are right when you say, could we have topped last night's 5A championship game? I think we, we might have just done that. A couple of notes here. Garrigan was up 16. Newell Fonda comes back in the third quarter. Newell Fonda's biggest lead of the game was five back in the first quarter. 
And Audie Crooks, that's a name, as you heard Jean Berger say at halftime, she loves watching the freshman play. And I get the sneaking suspicion that won't be the last time we see Garrigan against Newell here on the last game of the season. So we crown five champions over the last two nights. Johnston, Sioux City, Helan, North Scott, North Lynn, and now Newell Fonda. So thank you so very much for joining Iowa PBS Sports for another phenomenal year of girls basketball tournament coverage right here on Iowa PBS. We are proud to bring you broadcast coverage to our entire state in the coming months with state championships in soccer, softball, and volleyball right here on Iowa PBS Sports. We are your home for Iowa Girls High School Athletic Union State Championships. For our entire crew, uh, here, including director Andrea Coyle and everyone else that's behind the camera as well as on front. Thank you for allowing us to spend your weekend with us. We leave you now with an, another tradition, the sights and sounds of another classic tournament on that other classic tune that we showcased here for decades right here in downtown Des Moines. So again, Wells Fargo Arena and the rest of us here at Iowa PBS say good night. provided by Fairway Meat and Grocery is a proud sponsor of the Iowa Girls State Basketball Championships. Fairway believes in supporting the places Iowans learn, work, live, and play. Congratulations to all the schools and student athletes in this year's games. By Musco Lighting, the sports lighting specialist, providing lighting systems for you, your project, and your community. I am a farmer. I am a great cook. I am a small town girl. I'm a city boy. I'm a banker. I'm an Iowa banker. No matter who you are, there is an Iowa banker who is ready to help you get where you want to go. Iowa bankers, allowing you to discover the genuine difference of Iowa banks.